Hi. It's been a little while. Um, I've been very busy for a number of reasons, but um, partly because I'm preparing for my candidacy and um, I'm teaching uh, this semester. I'm actually teaching Algebra 2, which is, uh, oh, sorry about that, relatively, you know, advanced course. Uh, so I haven't even been making my you know, lazy book review content. I am by no means through my book collection yet. Uh, but let's, uh, you know, I, I said I wanted to do a, an AMA a little while ago for passing 2000 subscribers, uh, but I guess I'm not popular enough yet <laughs> to justify that. So I only, re I only got one question, but I guess I'll make uh, a video about it. Um, so let's go to my profile. And so maybe for, for context for everyone, um, I am a third year, you know, if you don't know, I'm a third year uh, PhD student. And so, uh, and I work in category theory. I, I'm doing stuff in local Langlands. So, you know, category of representations, the category of sheaves on a variety drive categories, homological algebra, you know, call homology of everything. And also one thing that people are trying to do is make the local Langlands conjectures, which classically were just about a special bijection, which like, who the hell cares about that? Um, and trying to make it more of a categorical statement. So this brings me to, to one question that was asked, uh, um, do you think category theory should be taught more early to most people? And in general, your thoughts on category theory. So that's what I'm going to talk about in this video. I'm I'm just, I have a couple small notes and I'm just going to go on an uh, unedited rant or discussion, what have you. Um, so first off, we have to narrow down the question, right? Obviously this question isn't about um, people working in, experimental poetry or something, although maybe you could make an argument about how category theory may pop up there. We're obviously talking about math majors. That's already pretty diverse though, right? I mean, you could get a bachelor's in mathematics and end up going into actuarial sciences, physics, computer science. Um, and some of these things will use category theory, right? Like in computer science, you know, type theory is a big thing, thinking categorically, you know, there, there are, there's programming languages like Haskell, very categorical, there's proof assistance, which involve both mathematicians and computer scientists and, and many more things that I'm, I'm missing. Um, but, you know, let's, let's focus in for a second to help focus this question. Like, let's think about what a math education should do. And because category theory, so, so I'm going to perhaps mistakenly um, um, or, or incompletely ignore some of the applied aspects of, of category theory for a moment. And let's just think about a pure math degree, right? What should a pure math bachelor's prepare you to do? Well, um, by definition, you're not applying it to the real world, right? So, so, so really, I mean, it should prepare you to go to grad school and grad school should prepare you to be an academic. Um, for some reason, we, we don't teach people how to teach, uh, which kind of makes sense. Uh, well, I don't know, maybe not. I mean, you can end up at a research institution. Teaching doesn't have to be a part of it. Um, but you know, for example, teaching is important to me. And I think lots of people have, have shitty professors, um, and good professors, that, that they both, you know, deeply appreciate the good ones who care about teaching and, and you know, lament about the, the ones who are, are terrible at teaching. Um, nonetheless, research is an important component, right? So, so we could say um, maybe the education part of it is lacking, but certainly to be a successful research mathematician, uh, I mean, a bachelor degree should prepare you to do research in, in mathematics. That also takes a lot of forms, right? Someone who's doing peer math in PDEs, I mean, you can make an argument that, uh, you know, a certain flavor of PDEs 
um, solving them on a manifold, you know, you're looking at sections of a sheaf and that's, uh, uh, you know, just a functor, et cetera, et cetera. But, but let's be honest here. There's, there's many people in this world who know nothing about categories and never need to for the work, right? So should most people, I don't know. I don't know. Let me, uh, uh, I'm going to give a little bit more concrete of an answer in a minute, but, but, but let me waffle for a little bit longer. Um, to me, mathematics culture is an important part of a mathematics education. At least it's something that I personally value. Uh, can I make the argument that everyone else should care about it? I don't know. I care about culture in what I say when I mean this, I care about history of mathematics and the philosophy of mathematics, right? To some extent, you know, many mathematicians have some interest, but also many don't, right? So like I, I do know people who just, they want to know, they just want to learn this tool and then go and prove something with it, right? They're just solving problems and and they're not, uh, they're not invested in the lore of mathematics, let's say, and that's fine right? Should we impose that lore on them? You know, because like, I think it can be helpful, right? To have this narrative structure about mathematics in general, and to be connected to different fields and different ways of of, of thinking. You know, it, it seems quite logical that, um, that, that is going to be beneficial for for many mathematicians, right? But like I just said, there are counterexamples. You know, you you don't actually need to know any of that stuff to be a successful mathematician. <clears throat> so, and I think one thing I'm struggling with a lot too in the post secondary system is there seems to be a lot of uh, bureaucracy. You know, trying to force feed students, it's like, oh, we need to make sure students like this and and students learn this. But, you know, the old adage, like, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink, right? If, if you know, if an analysis student doesn't want to learn algebra, they're not really going to learn it, you know? If they don't like it, they're going to they're gonna do enough to, to get past whatever qual they need. And, uh, yeah, I mean, can we, can we do nothing? Like, like, I guess we do want to force students to have a, a basic background in a bunch of different fields. Um, but you can't teach someone to have that, that thirst for a general sense of knowledge. Right. And, and is, is it even worth our time to, to bureaucratically mandate it? Right. So I think maybe what, what we should do is find other ways to encourage young mathematicians to take a wide variety of, of courses rather than bureaucratically mandate it. I mean, there's a balance, right? Like we do have to make sure everyone knows like, like basic proofs and like basic algebra groups and, and basic analysis um, and, and things like this. But um, you know, lately I'm feeling more like, like things should be about, inspiring people to do something rather than mandating them to do something. Okay, we're, we're perhaps getting a little off topic or a little too broad. So coming back to category theory specifically, um, yeah, for, for me, I think everyone should have a solid grounding in foundations and history. And that, and that means category theory. At least part of me thinks this, um, especially since you know, I recently had an existential crisis about about the foundations in mathematics because I've used categories all the time, and I realized I never stopped once to think about what the hell a, a proper class is, and I never learned, not even in my foundations course, right? And it's like, yeah, I'm casually going beyond standard, you know, mathematics. You know, when you're young, everyone tells you, oh, we're all working in ZF or ZFC. But everyone's casually going beyond it, right? And then you look, you know, there's these, uh, you know, class, there's these nice discussions online about like, well, does the proof of Fermat's last theorem, is it is it in ZFC? And, you know, questions about universes and, and SJ4. And it's like, why? Well, you know, everyone's actually who's doing like algebraic geometry or talks about categories at all ever is 
well, either they're using classes without understanding what they are. I mean, some people do, right? But or they're implicitly taking this large cardinal, this hierarchy, this infinite hierarchy of large cardinals from SGA4, and they're just blissfully unaware of it. I mean, in some sense, that's kind of the point, right? It's like, like logicians are supposed to, you know, work out this foundational stuff for non-logicians so the non-logicians can just live their life and, and do mathematics uh, any, any other way that they want to. Um, yeah, but I mean, if your work is coming up against having to use these axioms and serious considerations about them, I mean, part of me is feeling like you should, you should learn about that. Um, how, how do you know you're not making a mistake? Uh, how do you, how do you know you're using these tools the right way if you don't learn about these foundations? Um, <clears throat> So again, getting a little ranty and, and, and off topic, but to, to bring it back around, you know, that's a sort of argument for, well, we need to expose young mathematicians to a breadth of, of material because they might not know when they're going outside of this um, sort of realm. Um, for me, anyway, so for me, it just, that makes sense, right? But again, who am I to impose this, right? If I was sitting on some departmental committee, I mean, like I, that's my view of mathematics. And, and like I said, there's plenty of counter examples of, of people who do brilliant work and, and just never think about this at all. Uh, but then you could turn around and say, well, maybe their work would be even more brilliant if, if they had these considerations in mind. Um. So I guess in the end, I have no idea. Here's what I can say. Um, undoubtedly, modern algebra is written in the language of category theory. And so I think that um, if, if, if I were designing the algebra sequence, starting with like algebra one, introduction to groups, and two and three in the grad courses, I would work entirely out of a Luffy, chapter zero by a Luffy, because it slowly introduces these categorical concepts and tells you a way to interpret and think about these statements categorically, which is essential for the modern perspective in algebra. So at the very least, I can say this. I think that uh, these days, a sequence, any sequence in algebra should be gently introducing categorical language from the get-go. Um, but I also believe that we need to do more to talk about class theory, the theory of proper classes, and or the theory of large cardinals and these extra assumptions. I think, I think there needs to be more serious and frank discussions um, about these, because I feel like I didn't receive an adequate education um, in these important uh, you know, background facts. So this much I can say. Um, yeah, more generally, uh, I guess just to sum it up one more time, you know, I feel like it's an important thing as part of a math education to have a broad historical and philosophical perspective and, and to know that there are other foundations out there, especially with type theory and, and computers and proof assistance uh, being so big these days. Um, but I'm also not sure that that I am justified in enforcing my will in this sense on other mathematicians. But you know, maybe rather I would I would encourage mathematicians uh, to do it. So so maybe um, as I go forward in my own department here, or if I end up holding a position. Um, as a professor at some point in the future, maybe instead of mandating things like that, just giving more talks, you know, having more talks as just a, a casual meeting to have some coffee and a short talk and to try and inspire someone to, to, to care about these things. So should you learn category theory? Well, if you want to, <laughs> if you don't want to learn something, then it's going to be very hard to learn something, right? Um, and, and I don't think like, I mean, let me say this, if, if you're interested, if you think you're interested in algebra and you don't like category theory, then you're probably not interested in algebra. Um, uh, and, 
Oh yeah, I I will say you know I have a friend uh, who who's never been a big fan of category theory, but recently he's found a lot of utility. Um, you know, in he does functional analysis in in <clears throat> making statements about equivalences of categories. It's actually been you know sort of useful and powerful way to describe things. So I would just say be open. Try and be open to it. Try and be open to other fields of of mathematics um, because you never know when that way of thinking could be could be useful. <clears throat> okay, I've probably just ranted on uh, uselessly and take taken uh way too long to say what i need to say but i thought i would just check in mostly um say hey i'm still alive i'll be making more videos at some point um and uh i hope you're doing well and uh yeah if you have more questions that i can make quick unhinged unnecessarily long rants about uh, let me know and maybe I'll do some book reviews soon. I've been putting off the sheafification because I wanted to prove some certain theorems for the completeness, you know, in detail and give examples, but then I also didn't want to slog through it. But there's some stuff about sheaves I've been thinking about in my own research lately that led me to reconsider some basic questions. So maybe I'll just toss in a video about that which is sort of like a jump ahead from where the series went but uh we'll see in all likely likeliness because i'm teaching this algebra course if i make some videos it might be for my algebra class um i might rant unhingedly about the axiom of choice soon um so look forward to that